Hello, I'm Dan Smith, President of CAPSIM. This is the first in a series of newsletters that we'll be sending you. Our intention is to offer you weekly teaching tips about using simulations in the classroom. Over the next few months, we'll be offering you topics that range from course design to homework assignments. This week, we're going to look at the differences between tournaments and foot races. A tournament or a foot race are the two styles for organizing your class into teams and simulation industries. When determining team structure, a core consideration is how big is my class. Uh, to demonstrate, let's consider class sizes ranging from just three students to a thousand students. In Capstone Foundation, we use a maximum of six teams per industry. Let's look at uh, tournament structure first. With a class of just three students, you could set up an industry that is one human team and five computer managed teams. With six students, you could keep that structure or you could break the class into two human teams and four computer managed teams. Now it's easy to see that as the class gets bigger, the computer teams are cast aside and they're replaced by human teams. By the way, activating computer teams in either Capstone or Foundation is always an option. A computer managed team plays a preset strategy. Six strategies are available and we'll feature a newsletter and a video addressing those strategies in the near future. So, returning to the team and class structure. At 36 students, we have six teams of six people. Now that's a very effective arrangement. At 42 students, we reach a team size of seven students per team. Over the years, I've learned to personally draw the line at seven students per team. Now that's a matter of taste. You may prefer a larger team size. But of 43 students, I break the class into two industries. We often call them worlds, world one and world two. Team sizes dropped to four or five, uh, but my workload just increased. I must now track two worlds instead of one. Two worlds can handle up to 84 students, but then we reach another ceiling, and at this point, the foot race approach becomes attractive. Uh, we call it a foot race because it's similar to a track meet with a, a meet with a runner in each lane. Each team is in a parallel universe. They're all competing against the same standardized playing field, and competitors are managed by the computer. There's no limit to the number of students that you can have in a foot race. Since every team is Andrews, within the reports, we allow teams to give themselves a name to distinguish themselves from other teams. So, which format is best for your class? There are three factors to consider. The first is the impact upon the learning. Second, benchmarking requirements. Third, professor workload. A tournament style is somewhat more effective for learning. Students prefer to compete against other humans. Tournaments drive their emotions, and the emotions anchor the learning. Now, a foot race can generate excitement too, but if benchmarking and workload are not relevant, we recommend a tournament. Most classes with fewer than 42 students are tournaments. When benchmarking matters, foot, ra foot races are best. Foot races offer a standardized playing field. Each human team competes with computer-managed competitors. Our Assurance of Learning exam, CompXM, is a foot race. Similarly, our biannual intercollegiate capstone and foundation challenge are foot races. Professor workload. Professor workload is very important, and we go to great lengths to reduce it. If you have, some, have six teams or less, a tournament is less work than a foot race. Between seven and 12 teams, the workload is roughly the same. With 13 or more teams, a foot race is less work. Either style can work for you regardless of your class size. For example, at schools like Baylor and Penn State, they have class sizes between 400 and 1,100 students. They like the tournament approach, even though it means they have up to 30 worlds going at once. The logistics have to be planned out in detail. It takes a small group of dedicated staff and teaching assistants to carry out the delivery. In contrast, the University of Oregon does a foot race each semester with as many as 1,200 students and just one professor and a handful of teaching assistants. The workload in a foot race is more or less constant. Setup, administration, debriefing, they're easier than in a tournament. Even the scheduling is flexible. If a team falls behind, 
they don't affect other teams, and they can catch up in a self-paced mode. That wraps up this week's uh, newsletter. We'll offer a follow-up webinar Thursday, October 15th at 2 p.m. Central Time. In the webinar, we'll answer any questions you might have, and we will demonstrate how to set up tournaments and foot races for you. We also welcome any feedback you have about our newsletters. What topics would you like to see? What suggestions would you like to pass on to other professors? Thanks for watching. Next week, we'll look at the general question, what is the best way to introduce a simulation? As part of that, we're going to look at the website's Getting Started section and at the rehearsal simulation. Have a great week, and thanks for watching.